You know, today, though, I, I want to address another challenge that families are facing, and the one I think they're most focused on right now, high gas prices. This is a problem, not just here in the United States, but around the world. The price of gasoline has reached record levels recently in Europe and in Asia. In France, at the end of the last month, it reached about $7 per gallon. In Japan, it's about $5.50 per gallon, the highest it's been in years. Of course, it's always painful when gas prices, gas prices spike. Today, the price of gas in America, on average, is $3.40 a gallon. In California, it's much higher. The impact is real. But the fact is, we faced even worse spikes before, just in the last decade. We saw it in 2012, when the price of gasoline hit $3.90. We saw it in 2014, when it hit $3.69. And re as recently as 2019, we saw it surpass $3 in many places. The fact is, we always get through those spikes, but we're going to get through this one as well, and hopefully faster. But it doesn't mean we should just stand by idly and wait for prices to drop on their own. Instead, we're taking action. The big part of the, of the reason Americans are facing high gas prices is because oil-producing countries and large companies have not ramped up the supply of oil quickly enough to meet the demand. And the smaller supply means higher prices globally, globally, for oil. To address these issues, I got on the phone with leaders from other countries grappling with this challenge to try to find ways to lower oil prices and ultimately to, to the, the price you pay at the pump. So today, I'm announcing that the largest ever release from the U.S. Strategic Petroleum Reserve to help provide the supply we need as we recover from this pandemic. In addition, I brought together other nations to contribute to the solution. India, Japan, the Republic of Korea, and the United Kingdom have agreed to release additional oil from their reserves and China may do more as well. This coordinated action will help us deal with a lack of supply, which in turn helps ease prices. The bottom line, today we're launching a major effort to moderate the price of oil, an effort that will span the globe in its reach and ultimately reach your, cor your corner gas station, God willing. I've worked hard these past few weeks in calls and meetings with foreign leaders policymakers to put together the building blocks for today's global announcement. And while our, our combined actions will not solve the problem of high gas prices overnight, it will make a difference. It will take time, but before long, you should see the price of gas drop where you fill up your tank. And in the longer term, we will reduce our reliance on oil as we shift to clean energy. But right now, I will do what needs to be done to reduce the price you pay at the pump. The price of gasoline in the wholesale market has fallen by about 10 percent over the last few weeks, but the price of the pump hasn't budged a penny. In other words, gas supply companies are paying less and making a lot more. And they do not seem to be passing that on to the consumers at the pump. In fact, if the gap between wholesale and retail gas prices was in line with past averages, Americans would be paying at least 25 cents less per gallon right now, as I speak. Instead, companies are pocketing the difference as profit. That's unacceptable. And that's why I've asked the Federal Trade Commission to consider whether potentially illegal and anti-competitive behavior in the oil and gas industry is causing higher prices for consumers. So we can assure the American people are paying a fair price for their gasoline. 